morning people welcome back to f politics yes i'm still taking things easy which is why you're not seeing me in this format very often because it takes more work on the editing side but i did want to talk about this robert buckland the tory mp was on the peston show last night and as a tory mp he was elected on the get brexit done manifesto so his entire reason for being in office is to get brexit done to do brexit so keep that in mind as you watch this 87 percent of young people want to rejoin the European Union. <laughs> Stephen's completely <laughs> right that that is a big driver. Brexit is a big driver of, of, of why, you know, young people are so fed up with politics. And you agree with young people on this. You, well, you... I do. I do, of course I do. I voted Remain, I'd vote Remain now. That is a current Tory MP saying that we should not have done Brexit because he'd vote to Remain now, and that he supports the young people who want to rejoin the EU now. And that stands out because if you compare that with other Tory MPs who voted Remain, they're now saying they believe in Brexit, like Liz Truss. And let's not forget, Robert Buckland himself was saying in 2019, vote Conservative to get Brexit done. So he was objectively supporting Brexit, and now he's saying it was the wrong thing to do. He's literally saying, you elected me on a mistake, a mistake that I tricked you into. And as we've discussed before, they can't hide behind the democracy excuse of the referendum result because the 52% includes people like the Brexit Party under Nigel Farage and the Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland, both of whom oppose Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. So all the Tories pushed for Brexit knowing that the 52% wasn't all behind it. Which has me thinking, because yes, to be fair, a Tory MP who voted Remain saying that he'd rather remain isn't that newsworthy. What we really want is a Tory MP who campaigned for Brexit, who pushed for Brexit, saying he no longer believes in Brexit and that it was a mistake. And the closest we've got to that is pretty much every Tory MP who pushed for Brexit saying that Brexit has harmed us now. But sadly, we're never gonna get to the point where those people admit that it was the wrong thing to do, because that means admitting that they spent 10 years wrongfully hurting this country. And if they were immoral enough to tell the lies that got us here in the first place, then they're not gonna be that honest with us in future if it hurts their reputations. But let's say theoretically that they were, should there be forgiveness? Should we show mercy? Yeah, no, never gonna happen. Why? Because they did not show us mercy at all. Because if you take the period from 2016 to 2019, the public was screaming, stop this. There were thousands of people marching in the streets every few months. Their own government experts said, no matter what version of Brexit they negotiated, it would make us poorer. So they knew they were hurting the country, they knew the country was screaming for help, and they just let us scream. So, mercy? Nah. Prosecution for misconduct in public office and a jail sentence for betraying the public's trust while in a position of power? Yeah, I could do that. I'm Femi. Make sure you follow F Politics so politics doesn't F you. Have a great week. Brexit was more traumatic, I think, for this sector than many others. And I think we're now in that very difficult bit where the costs are obvious. The, Do you the, agree with the, Chris that it is costing? I think it's, it it's has... that we are paying the cost of Brexit in our food bills. I think it has had some cost. Uh, that if you look at small deliveries of things like cheese, you were talking about 71% increase maximum level on the retail price. But we're losing people from London permanently. They're going to take up residence in other European countries with European citizenship because they can't operate, they can't pursue their careers. Um, we, we, by, by, staying, by staying in London. So it's about British citizens taking up citizenship in other countries um, because their, their career opportunities are so limited compared to what they were. So Around why have we got a significant trade. reduction in trade intensity that stayed low, whereas others have come back? Yeah, as I said, I, without a doubt, yeah. we're changing our trading relationship with the EU and that means a different set of controls and uh, things that people will have to do and that will obviously have an impact and that I'm sure is, is a big part of the reason why this is happening. Would membership of the single market be something that would boost growth and change our current economic outlook? I think having uh, unfettered trade with our neighbours and countries all over the world is very beneficial to growth. Vital drugs have not been uh, able to be moved from Great Britain uh, to Northern Ireland. Uh, 30 drugs, including cancer drugs. I think uh, about 200 companies have stopped shipping stuff. Uh, there's been uh, impediments to uh, to the movement of, of guide dogs, of, of parcels, of potted plants, of tractor parts.